He highlights two of the rays coming out of the black sun and also forms a triangle but vice versa. And he writes, as above so below. We are at war with a world, not like this world, but a shadow world. A dark world on the upside down of the planet, according to this video titled Freemason Reveals and Explains the Shape of the Earth, complete with the square and compass. This is probably the most far out video that any flat earther will ever see because it confirms that the earth is flat like a CD and there's a hole in the middle and through that hole comes the light from the black sun <laughs> but you don't think they're going to tell you what's actually going on do you? Ladies and gentlemen, you don't think they're just going to draw it out and reveal the secrets of the underworld? What are the secrets of the underworld? Why do we care? Because we're at war with this underworld, with this dark side. And we often say that we're broadcasting from the dark side of the planet. Every planet has a dark side. The moon has a dark side. We live in a world of polarity, north and south, west and east, good and evil, day and night. But have you noticed during the day there are shadows? Have you noticed that? What's up with the shadow? I'm sure everybody knows what a shadow is. You've seen the shadow in the science books. The shadow is an absence of light. In broad daylight, it's interesting. You can see the darkness in the light. It's a rare phenomenon. isn't it? And so, what if there's another world, an upside down world, a world that's like our world, except it's all darkness all the time. Now, of course, that world wouldn't live in our world. That world would live in another dimension, in another universe. And so what this probably represents, of course, nobody really knows much about the world that we live in. But what this probably represents isn't a world underneath our world on a flat earth but it could what this represents is an upside upside down world in another universe in another dimension that we can't see but somehow comes into this world how many of you have heard of the phenomenon shadow people. That's a crazy phenomenon. You'll hear people chatter about it. But until you see it for yourself, you have no idea what's going on. None. Now, most of the people say that they have their encounters with shadow people out in the country. You don't get a whole lot of people talking about shadow people in the city. But what these shadow people are remains a mystery. 
Is it some kind of Jedi mind trick by agents of the dark side? Can they project some kind of dark shadow person out there? Are these shadows ghosts? People without bodies? Unclean spirits? Demons, other forms of spiritual wickedness? Are they creatures from another dimension? We don't really know. Nobody can really say where these shadow people come from. But they're out there. What do they do? What do they want? What does it look like? It can look like a person walking. It can look like a monster lunging out at you. And it doesn't stop there. There's a lot of paranormal activity going on on planet Earth. Shadow people are just one of them. There's all sorts of monsters coming out of the shadows coming out of the smoke, coming out of the plastic, if you have an eye to see. There's a lot of paranormal activity going on on planet Earth, and you have to wonder where, where is it coming from. A lot of spiritual people out there can feel it. They can feel like something is going on right now, like the ecto-containment has been blown. some of the dead are walking amongst with us. Where do they come from? Where do they go? Is there a shadow world or is there a world here amongst with us? Why do they appear in the clouds? Why do they appear in the smoke and the fire? Why do we see faces like the devil on 9-11? Are they glitches in the matrix? What could be going on? And so we're going to explore the possibilities. Now this is an old video from a bombing back in the early 2000s. And we spotted this face in the reflection of the, the marble. Similar looking face of the smoke you see here on 9-11. Similar shape, similar look. What could be going on? Where do these creatures come from? Are they really in our world? Or are they in another world that's beginning to merge with our world? Are they crossing over? Are they not really here? They're only kind of here. That is the question, ladies and gentlemen. Not sure what the video guy is doing there. Of course, the 9-11 anniversary is coming up. We're going to be talking about that in some of our future broadcasts. What happened to all these people? Those that jumped to their death that were murdered. What happened to this building? Did it really just disappear? You'll notice that they conveniently left a space for these buildings at the World Trade Center. We can see them here. These reflection ponds. It's funny that they would call them reflection ponds next to the oculus. It's getting spooky in New York City, in New Babylon. Home of the telephone, home of the computer, home of electricity. Home of all of the innovation that made this beast system possible. Out there in New Babylon, New York, 666 Fifth Avenue. What's going on? Are those towers still there? But we just can't see them. Are they there in another world that's like our world, in the shadow world? These are the kind of questions that people should be asking, believe it or not, to a certain extent. Because 
we're at war with this dark side. We don't understand this enemy as much as we'd like to from the human perspective. It's like some kind of alien force that body snatches people, takes them over. All of these people that have been snatched by unclean spirits are part of a hive mind. They call themselves Legion. And just like in the New Testament, when the pigs were running off the cliff, you've got all of these cult members running off the cliff. We call them lemmings, but they're demon-possessed pigs. What is it with this enemy that we don't understand? How do we defeat it? How do we destroy it? Because it's out there, plotting our demise. It's been after humanity since the Garden of Eden. It's what we're really up against. But these creatures have been cast out into outer darkness. They are now the tormentors of this world going after everyone that loses their way and testing those that are trying to find their way. What is it with this enemy? Where do they come from? How do we destroy them? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a war. And it's against darkness, spiritual wickedness, the polarity opposite of good. Everything that is evil is encompassed by this dark side. They represent murder. They represent adultery, cheating, stealing, fornication, greed, lust, slothfulness, sodomy. They encompass everything it means to be evil. And then they infect humans on earth with their ideas, with their innovation. But it's more than just dark spirits body snatching innocent people. It's much worse than that. It's like an alien invasion. And it is a war, and we're on the battlefield. And so, there's no telling how accurate or inaccurate this depiction of our universe is. Because it looks more complicated than that. We almost don't dare offering our opinion on the shape of the planet just because it's so polarizing these days. Is it flat? Is it round? Is it a cube? Does it look like a watermelon? We don't really know. And I hate arguing with people that think they know what the planet looks like. What does the Bible say? It says it's round. Round like a pancake or round like a CD? What do you think of when you think of round? Maybe a basketball. Basketball's round. We don't know. We think we know, but we don't really know. The moon and the sun definitely look like they're closer than they are in the textbooks. He highlights two of the rays coming out of the black sun and also forms a triangle but vice versa. And he writes, as above so below. What does that mean? As above so below. They look at it as one thing. 
but Christians tend to look at it as another thing. The heavens above and the earth below. But they're looking at it as one side of the CD or one side of the coin and then the other side of the coin. Some kind of underworld. There's just so many questions. You could spend all day thinking about stuff like this. What are you allowed to think about really though? That's another question. In theory, this is dark side propaganda. They're not going to tell you what's going on. But they're going to give you an idea of what's going on. Now, the Bible tells us in Exodus 20, verse 4, that we're not to make any images of anything in the heavens above or in the earth below or the likeness thereof. So, even showing you this is dark-sided. Talking about it is dark-sided. This isn't our religion. We don't worry about what's going on in the underworld. But we are called to cast out demons. And we got plenty of demons and evil spirits walking amongst with us. So, for educational purposes, we're willing to talk about it. But this video is going to self-destruct within 48 hours. So you'll have to watch it. before that. any case, we haven't really prepared a huge lecture or dissertation on the shadow world. We can talk to you about our experiences. And the more you walk on this path towards being a saint, the more glitches you're going to see in the matrix. And chances are you've seen some for yourselves and you're wondering, are you hallucinating? Are you imagining what's going on? Is it your imagination? No, it's not your imagination. There's something terribly wrong with the world, terribly wrong with these evildoers around you. Many of you feel like you're all alone, like you're being gang stalked by the world around you. What your conclusion is is hard to say. Could be the government, could be the FBI, could be the Matrix, could be some cult. But you have that feeling like there's something wrong with the world. And this is the war that we're up against. You feel like there's something wrong with the world because there's a war going on right now. And our world began to change on 9-11. I'm not sure how many of you are Gen Xers that grew up in the 80s and the 90s, or maybe before. But you know that after 9-11, things started to go downhill real fast. And it may or may not have been a free world or a perfect world before then, obviously. But things really changed after 9-11. And so these buildings are essentially the beginning of that change. Many of us have moved on since 9-11, thinking about other things, like the pandemic or what have you. 
but this was the beginning of it. This is when our worlds went from normal to abnormal. And so this is a key event in the timeline. This location remains a very important location in human history. And if there is a shadow world, whatever is projecting from these reflection ponds must be like pure evil. To say the least. And so what can be done about it? How do we stop whatever is projecting out of the, out of those reflection ponds? Because if there is a portal to the dark side, it must be right there. One of them. Right there. And so this portal is hiding in plain sight, heavily protected. Not sure how many people have looked around this area, but the basement of this new tri World Trade Center looks like some kind of tomb or it looks like some kind of temple to the dark side as well. Has really weird doors, a real weird look to it. But chances are if there is a shadow world these twin towers are still there because nothing was built to replace them. The foundation is basically right there. You can imagine that the shadow world is like the shadows in our world where they have a type of reflection to what's going on in this world. And so if a building gets demolished and something is rebuilt in its place, you would imagine that the shadow world would follow along with it. But given that nothing has replaced these Twin Towers in our world, and given the the impact of 9-11, the people that died, the horror worldwide, not just the people that died there, but all the people that died because of what happened there, of course, we haven't even mentioned, you know, how that happened, the inside job. How did they get away with it? But from a medical, metaphysical perspective, there is a high probability that this area is haunted, beyond haunted. And if murder and death open up portals to some other world like what we've seen, ah, if we can find this video, video guys on vacation, totally means that we got to wrap this up, but essentially when you start seeing faces in the smoke that look like the devil and similar looking faces during mass murder events then this can have some kind of temporal impact past present and future from this world of darkness from this shadow world and i know this video is going to come come back where we see the face of the devil in the smoke but it's like a it's like a fingerprint it's like a leaf blowing in the wind we know there's something there 
and you have to think about how did this happen? How did this get there? How did that face get there? Where do these faces come from? Why is it only there for a second? And you see more of this type of activity at night. Much more paranormal activity, especially out in the country where there isn't as many street lights. And you can see the shadows dance, quite literally, in the night. And it can get creepy. The shadows can get creepy. If you have an eye that can see. And of course, you know, this is just a matter of perception and perspective. For some people, this will be nothing but a coincidence. For the perpetual skeptic, there's nothing there. It just looks that way. It's suggestive, but it isn't what you think it is. But those people are usually the ones that are worshipping the devil and molesting children and the like. Most Christians, when they saw the face of the devil in the smoke of 9-11, they knew exactly what that was. And when you see the face of what looks like a similar looking demon at a mass murder event it can't be a coincidence they have the same look the same face it's like they're looking at you from another world and we get a glimpse of it on the radar every once in a while that's what this is from my perspective There's just so much you could say about this topic. But... For those that have seen shadow people, and you wonder where do these things come from? Is it some kind of Project Blue Beam from another world, another dimension? It's an, it's an observation in the physical world, so it's... A fair thing to talk about. These things are manifesting from somewhere. And I suppose the most important conclusion that you have to remember here, and this is really the crux of the, the broadcast, and I'm just remembering about it now, it's that this world was created by the Almighty. This world comes from the spiritual world. The physical world was spawned by the spiritual world. The physical world is a veil. Behind that veil is something else that you get glimpses of that you can see from time to time. And they say the veil gets thinner during the winter in the northern hemisphere. There's more darkness. We could talk about that. But essentially... We're dealing with a spiritual world interacting with the physical world. And we know that the unclean spirits have been cast into outer darkness, into the dump, into the graveyard. And somehow they've managed to infiltrate this world through like a back door. Or we don't really know as humans. There's a lot you could say about the dark side, the accuser, the prosecutor, the tempter, the enemy. Are they the garbage men? We don't really know. But it's part of the equation. It's part of the big picture. There's another world beyond this world. And it interacts with this world. And essentially what we see in this world is like a ripple effect from what's happened in the spiritual world. We view it from the perspective of being physical creatures in a constructed reality, like a matrix. But instead of ones and zeros, it's protons and electrons. And essentially when you dream, that's like being in the spiritual world. You move around, you can interact. 
but you don't ever really see yourself walking. You just get there. And you could go on and on about stuff like this all day long, but we'll have to leave it there for this broadcast. We'll come back to this subject eventually. Again, this broadcast is going to self-destruct in 48 hours. So if you want to watch it again, do that. Give you something to think about. But of course, all of this is a supplement to the Bible. And these glimpses, these topics that we discuss is certainly not a replacement for what's in the Bible. That's the core of your foundation. That's where you need to be at. And once you're there and you leave doubt behind, you'll see the glitches in the matrix for yourselves and you'll wonder, you know, what is it? Is it the upside down? Is this hell? Are we in hell right now? I'm not sure if there's cute babies and cute puppies in hell. Hell, in theory, would be at the center of the earth. What does that mean? Exactly. So we'll leave that for another broadcast. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Until the next time. If you're listening to this, you are the resistance.